today we have a session on what does bhagavad gita say about the role of the spiritual teacher so it's important to understand first and foremost who is the spiritual teacher and where does spiritual knowledge and realization come from in the bhagavad gita krishna himself speaking to arjun declares desham satatam yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te for those who are in constantly engaged in trying to connect with me to unite with me i personally give them that intelligence by which to come to me krishna declares clearly that he guides you to him tesham satatam yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upyanti te so if you are constantly engaged in seeking him he gives you that intelligence and guidance by which to come to him tesham evanu kampartham aham agnana jam tamah nasham yatma bhavasto gnana deepena vasata seated in your heart with the shining lamp of knowledge krishna says i destroy the darkness that is born out of ignorance this is a very important verse god is in your heart and not only god is in your heart but god is also full of compassion for you and if you are constantly engaged in trying to connect with him to reach him he gives you the intelligence by which to come to him with the shining lamp of knowledge he destroys the darkness that is born out of ignorance from your heart but krishna also says in the bhagavad gita sarvasya chaham hridi sanvishto mata smritir gnanam apohanam cha ಕೃಷ್ಣಸೀಟೆಡ್ಯೋ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ krishna also says in the bhagavad gita ishwara sarva bhutanam hride deshe arjuna tishtati brahmyan sarva bhutani yantra rudani maya i am seated in your heart and i am dri- i am driving you onward towards your destiny you are only seated in a machine made of material energy ತಮೇವ ಶರಣ ಗಚ್ಛ ಸರ್ವಭಾವೇನ ಭಾರತ ತತ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಪರಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಯೋರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಯು and you will reach peace perfection and the supreme destination ananya chinta yanto mam ye jana paripasate tesham nitya vyukta nam yoga kshemam bahami aham he says for those who are constantly united with me who are always thinking of me who are worshiping me constantly he says i preserve what they have and i provide what they lack so all your spiritual needs 
are preserved and provided for by Krishna, who is seated in your heart. And he speaks from within your heart and he guides you onward towards your destiny. He gives you knowledge, he gives you remembrance, he gives you forgetfulness. Whatever you desire. And indeed, whereas by worship of other lesser gods, rather than the Supreme Lord, if you worship lesser gods, Te tam bhuktva svarga lokam vishalam chine punya matri lokam vishanti. You worship other gods like Indra, you will attain their abode, you will attain swarg. And then, having exhausted your pious credits, you will then again take birth in this world. But for those who are constantly thinking of me, those who are united with me, those who are surrendered to me, I will preserve all the spiritual knowledge they have, all the spiritual realizations they have, all the spiritual progress they have, I shall preserve. And I shall also provide what they lack. Because seated in their heart with a shining lamp of knowledge, I will destroy the darkness that is born out of ignorance. So who is the supreme teacher? Who is the supreme guru? God. Krishna. Krishna is the one who guides you back to him. Krishna is the one who takes you back to Godhead. Then your question might be, if God is only going to do all this and God is in my heart, why do I need anyone else? Why do I need a spiritual teacher? Why do I need any other guidance? Or why can't I hear the voice of God in my heart? Indeed, my friend, there are many, 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 many voices in your heart. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Matsya. So there are there are many, many types of voices in your heart. Lust and greed and envy, illusion, madness, all these voices are there in your heart. The voice of the ego, the voice of the self, which is a root from where all these other voices arise. So when you're angry, there's one voice. When you're frightened, there's one voice. When you're depressed, there's one voice. When you're greedy, there's another voice. All these are voices in your heart. These are actually voices in your head, not in your heart. But you mistake them for voices in your heart. Many years ago, a man climbed into a church tower in Austin, Texas, carrying with him a rifle. And with that rifle, he shot 14 people dead. When he was arrested, he said, God in my heart told me that I must kill these people. Do you think God in his heart would have spoken to this mad person and encouraged him to kill innocent people from a church tower? It wasn't the voice of God he heard, he heard the voice of madness. Just like we also often, when we get mad, we hear the voice of madness. Many years ago, there was a serial murderer called Raman Raghav in Mumbai. And he used to walk the pavements at night and when he came across people sleeping on the pavement, he would pick up a rock, a boulder, and he would bludgeon the poor sleeping innocent person to death. When Raman Raga was caught and he was asked, why did you murder so many people? Why did you bludgeon them to death with the rock? So Raman Raga said, 
God who was seated in my heart told me to do it. So in your heart, there are many voices. There is the voice of lust, of greed, of envy, of illusion, of madness. And if you have not silenced these other voices, you will never hear the voice of God. At least not clearly. If your house is full of children who are shouting and screaming, and your phone is a very soft ringtone, you may not hear your phone because of the shouting and screaming of your children and the voices of their friends while they're shouting and running around in your house. The soft ringtone on your phone may well be silent. Similarly, in your heart you have the Lord speaking to you in that small and still voice. And yet the tumult that is going on in your mind prevents you from hearing that voice in your heart. So while God is the reliable, consistent, dependable voice that takes you back to him, there are so many other voices in your head that you cannot hear God. Therefore, it is so important to have someone who will teach you how to silence the voices in your head so that you can hear the voice in your heart. I'm going to repeat this twice more. You need someone to teach you how to silence the voices in your head so that you can hear the voice in your heart. You need a spiritual teacher who can silence the voices in your head of lust, greed, envy, illusion, madness so that you can hear the voice of God directing you from within your heart. So that is the role of the spiritual teacher. The role of the spiritual teacher is not to make you dependent upon him. It is not to make you his slave. It is not meant, no teacher will want, no true teacher will want to, for you to center their lives around them. They want you to center your lives around God. See, you have to understand this so, this is so important that so many teachers are there in the world. Some are true, some are false, some are genuine, some are fake. And some are truly well-intentioned. But while they are well-intentioned, they're only human and they're weak. And they give in to temptation. The very act of being a teacher presumes that they have attained a high level. But what can they do when they themselves have not been able to maintain their spiritual practices and reach that platform? from which they're supposed to teach. Therefore, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Do not center your life around any spiritual teacher. Learn to center your life around God. Otherwise, there are so many examples of people who have taken spiritual teachers and when that spiritual teacher has passed away, they are lost, completely lost. 
And not only are they completely lost, they roam here and there. Somebody else takes over as a spiritual teacher. They can't follow that person. Some of them follow that person. Some don't. So people are confused. The purpose of a spiritual teacher is to help you silence the voices in your head so that you can hear the voice in your heart. Indeed, the job of the spiritual teacher is to teach you how to silence the mind. When you have a silent mind, then God will direct you. God will personally direct you. God will not have anybody between you and him. When you have silenced the mind, God himself will personally direct you. But first, you have to silence the mind. In the, how do you silence the mind? To silence the mind, you have to learn one very important thing. You have to learn to silence the voice which is constantly chattering inside your head. That voice which is called the monkey mind, that voice which is called the chattering mind, that voice which is reflected in neuroimaging as the default mode, that voice which is the constant voice in your head. Like the old man of the sea who sits on Sinbad's shoulders, refuses to get off and keeps chattering in his ear. So also we all have a mind and the purpose of that mind is to harass you, to create suffering for you. How can we make that mind silent so that we can hear God in our heart? And very clearly, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna clearly explains that one does that by acting in a spirit of sacrifice. So it is sacrifice which helps you to silence your mind. What is it that you need to sacrifice to silence your mind? You need to sacrifice the sense of self. What is the sacrifice of the sense of self termed as? It is termed as yagya. It's very clear. You need to understand that it is yagya and nothing else, which is the means by which you silence your mind. So there are many types of yagya. And in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains his personal choice of yagya. And what is Krishna's personal choice of yagya for you and for everyone else? Krishna declares in chapter 14, chapter 4, text 19. Yasya sarve samarambha kama sankalpa varjitaha. Gnyan Agni Dadda Karmani Tamahu Panditam Buddha. One is understood to have silenced his mind to be in full knowledge. <coughs> when every action of his or hers is devoid of desire for sense gratification. Every action he performs, every action she performs is completely devoid of any selfishness. With It is devoid of the desire to enjoy, to control, to possess. Such a person, sages say, 
is a person whose fruitive action is burnt up by the fire of perfect knowledge. So, jnana, agni, dagda, karmani. So, in fact, all his karmas have been burnt up in the fire of knowledge. This, Krishna says, is the most important. So Krishna also explains in text 22 of the fourth chapter. Yadrichalaba santushto dvandva tito vimatsaraha sama siddhava siddhaucha kritvapina nibadhyate. Those who are satisfied with gain that comes of its own accord, those who are free from duality. Who do not envy or hate, who are steady in both success and failure, such people, even though they perform work, they are not entrapped by karma. So, therefore, Krishna points out that the ultimate sacrifice that he recommends is that you do your duty not for the fruit, not for the result, not for praise, not for enjoyment, not for learning. You do it in a spirit of sacrifice to please God. <coughs> you do not think of yourself as the doer. You do not abstain from doing your duty. Such activity is the ultimate yajna recommended by Bhagwan Krishna. But having said that, Krishna explains there are many other types of yajnas also. These types of yajnas may be offering oblations in the holy fire to the devtas. There are those who offer to the supreme Brahman. There are people who refuse to hear anything and silence their hearing. And then there are those who hear only things about God. I'll share with you a personal example. There was a time I was so crazy about music. I would try to listen to music and listen to music and listen to music. And I recognized that this was my weakness. So I took my guidance from this verse. And I decided that the only music I would hear would be music that is dedicated to God. And I was so happy because there are so many religious organizations that are producing music for God. And I gathered all the music that I could and constantly, constantly I had a headphone in my head and whenever I was not working, whenever I was not gainfully occupied, I would be listening to music that reminded me of God. And by constantly hearing this, there are so many genres of music about God. You can choose what you like. If you are a Krishna devotee, you may like Krishna bhajan. Then there are so many genres of Krishna bhajans about God also. You have Krishna bhajan in rock. You have Krishna bhajan in various styles. So I listened and I listened and I listened and I listened. Frankly, now I have no burning desire to listen to music. If it's there, it's fine. If it's not there, it's also great. Because that is the way one sacrifices everything to God. 
you sacrifice the objects of the senses to God by making sure that whatever you hear, in my example, music, was the means by which I could become free from the desire to listen. Thus, there are other yajyas described in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna explains that people do it through pranayam. And through pranayam, they sacrifice the ingoing breath, the outgoing breath, the part when there is no breath, which is called kumbhaka. And they eventually attain that state of keval kumbhaka when there is no breath in their body. And they are able to silence the mind and their breath. Then there are those who perform yajyas where they give material possessions. They take strict vows. People follow Ashtang Yoga. They engage in meditation. They engage in mindful yoga asana practices. And then there are others who study the Upanishads and other scriptures for the advancement of their spiritual knowledge. So when one occupies oneself most of the time in remembering God and forgetting self through one's work and the rest of the time by performing one or other work that helps you to remember God and forget self, your mind will become cleansed. Of the intensity of ego, of the intensity of the sense of self, which will be suspended, will be in abeyance, which you will transcend. And you get knowledge. Because knowledge is the objective of all yajyas. And what knowledge? Not the knowledge you get from reading a scripture, not the knowledge you get by attending a lecture, not the knowledge you get by saying, oh, I have studied this, oh, I have studied that book, I have studied this scripture. It is transcendental realized knowledge. And what is that transcendental realized knowledge? Krishna says very clearly, Yajgnatvana punar moham evam yasyasi pandava sarva bhutani asheshani drakshasya atmano atomai. When you have learnt that truth, you will know that all beings they lie within me, they're in me in their mind. That is the silent mind. Just like fire turns firewood into ashes, so also the fire of the yajna that you perform, the fire of the knowledge that arises from the yajna you perform, will burn all your desires, your vasanas, your karma, and inactivate them. Api chedasi pape bio serve bio papa kritamaha servam jnana plavai naiva virginam santirish. So, seated on this boat of transcendental knowledge, that the realization that we are all but part of God, they're in Him and they're His. That not a blade of grass moves without God's consent. That my job is to fulfill the purpose of my creation by being engaged in swadharma, in a spirit of sacrifice and devotion to God. With this knowledge, one can cross over the ocean of sin and one can reach the Lord and perfection. So, therefore, yajna. Krishna says, is supreme 
and we have to perform yagya how do you perform yagya because indeed krishna says in chapter 4 text 31 nayam lokosti ayagnasya kutu anya kuru satamaha he says o oh, best of the kuru dynasty o oh, arjun krishna tells him without yagya without sacrifice you cannot live happily in this life what to speak of the next when you do not perform yagya which is the annihilation of self which is best done by remembering god and forgetting self that self will torture you i me mine why am i suffering why did this happen to me and so on so forth why couldn't i have that so you will keep on suffering in this world but if you want to transcend suffering you have to transcend the self to transcend the self you have to perform yagya and to perform yagya krishna says in chapter 4 text 34 tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te gnanam gnanina sattva darshana just try to learn the truth how just learn how to do yagya tat vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya if you want to know how to perform yagya then you should reach out to a spiritual teacher ask him how can i perform yagya and render service unto him this person who has performed yagya and realized the truth through the performance of yagya can teach you how to perform that yagya because he has experienced that path and he will guide you what is it i am doing wrong why is it that i cannot attain that state where i am being progressively detached from this world i have given you very very clear instructions that if from this moment on everything you do yat karoshi yad ashnasi yat jhosi dadasi yat yat tapasyasi kaunteya tat purusha madarpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer whatever you give away whatever charities whatever austerities you perform everything you do for krishna and if you can act in this way krishna says right shubha ashubha phale reva moksha se karma bandhane sanyas yog yukte na vimukto maam evashisi if you act in this way performing everything for god and i also explain to you everything you do whether it's an email you write whether it's a text message you send whether it's a phone call that you are making before you do it visualize the feet of krishna see the action you are performing as a flower and place that flower at krishna's feet before you perform that action understand you are not the doer understand in fact that you expect nothing from this and you will not cease to do your duty even though you are challenged and as you offer that flower that action at his feet remember that and do this through the day at the end of the day pick up all the flowers that you have offered at krishna's feet all the actions you have offered at his feet pick up every single flower make them into a garland and put it around krishna's neck and my friends 
the heavier that garland, the lighter your heart. The lighter that garland, the heavier your heart. That is the law. So that when you are not working, and indeed, my friend, you may spend nearly 50% of your time waiting. So if you are engaged in not working, keep yourself engaged by chanting Krishna's name. Because chanting Krishna's name is not just a yajna. Krishna says, yajna nam japo yagnosmi in the Bhagavad Gita. Clearly he says, yajna nam japo yagnosmi of all forms of sacrifice. I am that chanting of the holy name. So while the preferred sacrifice is to do everything for God as a flower offered at his feet. At the end of the day, pick up all those flowers, put that garland down his neck. And when you are not engaged in doing something for Krishna, don't waste your time doing something which is trivial, which will distract your mind. Engage in chanting God's name. And this is the practical experience of a working person. That if you give up all anarthas, all useless activities, you will be able to chant two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. That is, you will be able to chant at least 16 malas of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra in the morning and 16 malas of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra in the evening. On a holiday when you have no work, it's a holy day. Chant 64 malas from morning to night. So, throughout the working day, work in a spirit of sacrifice and devotion to God. When you are not working, chant His name. On a holy day, chant whole day. That is eight hours of the day. And in 15 days, if you do not get a difference in your state of consciousness, please contact me. Because you must experience, if you do this for 15 days, you must experience without any doubt increased detachment from the world. and spiritual realization which will be seen by your sense of self being transcended. So therefore, I now give you what Bhagavad Gita says about Krishna. What Krishna says about the teacher in the Bhagavad Gita. And I am explaining to you that God is the one who will eventually guide you towards him. Therefore, don't center your life around any teacher. Center your life around God. When your teacher dies, when he attains samadhi, when he goes from this planet, you will be confused, you will be bewildered, you will be lost. So the sooner you center your life around God, the better it will be. And the job of a teacher is to help you to center your life around God. And how does he help you to center your life around God? His job is to make you independent of him. He, his job is to make you dependent on God, on Krishna. His job is not to deal with trivialities in your life or worldly things in your life. His job is to guide you how to perform yajna, how to perform sacrifice. And by the performance of sacrifice, you must begin to experience knowledge and detachment. 
ವಸುದೇವ ಭಗವತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಜನಾಯತಿ ಅಶು ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಲೆಸ್ಲಿ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ and as you achieve a silent mind through that knowledge and detachment you will hear the voice of krishna in your heart and that voice of krishna in your heart will constantly guide you on your path so krishna is very clear in bhagavad gita you need a teacher but that teacher's job is to teach you how to perform yagya in fact how to make your life a yagya and if you follow his instructions you must get a result otherwise ask him he will guide you that's why you don't have a dead teacher many people say oh ye photo hum laga rahe hain wo hamara guru hai what nonsense is that he says pari prashnena sevaya you have to ask questions and to him and you have to serve him how can you do that with someone who's dead how can you do that with a photo that is stupidity so when you approach a spiritual teacher you ask him how to perform yagya how do you remember god in a manner by which you forget self you ask questions unto him until you have perfected the technique you serve him krishna says and finally when you have perfected the technique then god will directly guide you indeed don't be dependent on any individual and the purpose of the spiritual teacher is to guide you how to perform yagya not to make you dependent on him or her so i will pause now you are welcome to ask any questions good morning sir so our first question is uh, when exactly one should look for a spiritual teacher in life because people people usually go on with their lives when they are young and they do not realize that uh, in the rush of life that even if they need any spiritual teacher the answer is now hmm. sure sir so sir should i move to the another question yes yes sir so can we have more than one spiritual teacher in life of course you can have more than one spiritual teacher one spiritual teacher may die he may fall into disrepute he may uh, be unable to guide you beyond a certain point right the purpose is to teach you how to perform yagya so that you can hear the voice of god in your heart his job is to help to connect you with god and then step out of the way short sir so with that moving to another question so how do people know if they should look for a psychologist or go for a spiritual teacher as they both deal with mental health there is nothing wrong with taking guidance from a spiritual psychologist and if you don't need there's no nothing wrong with taking guidance from a psychiatrist there's nothing wrong in taking psychiatric medication there's nothing wrong in taking electroconvulsive therapy there's nothing wrong with taking direct cranial stimulation there's nothing wrong in doing whatever is necessary for the health of your prakriti all these people deal with your prakriti for guidance on how to tune yourself and realize your identity as purush you need spiritual guidance and a spiritual teacher 
Sure, sir. So, in today's world, there are several spiritual teachers available nowadays. So, how to know that we have found the right spiritual teacher for ourselves? See, that's a different subject altogether. But the important thing about it is, I've told you what is the role of the spiritual teacher. The spiritual teacher doesn't try to take over your life. The spiritual teacher tries to connect you with God. The spiritual teacher does not want you to become a slave. The spiritual teacher wants you to center your life around God and learn to serve God. This is the critical thing. The spiritual teacher does not want to make himself irreplaceable. He wants to make God as what is your irreplaceability, irreplaceable goal. Sure, sir. We can consider them as the qualities of the spiritual teacher as well. What you See, ultimately, say. God will give you the teacher that you deserve. Right? Everything is given to you as you deserve it. So, God will guide you to the teacher that you deserve. Try to be deserving of a genuine spiritual teacher. You will get the genuine spiritual it is also about the faith, we can say. We have to keep the faith that the God will guide us. Towards yeah, God, God will guide you, but don't have faith in the wrong people. Faith is reserved for Krishna. Faith is not reserved for the wrong people. Yes, absolutely, in God. So I don't sure. recommend that you have faith in people, teachers or otherwise. I recommend that you have faith in God. And whoever strengthens your connection with God that person is your teacher. Sure. We can cover that in, in another session. All right, sir. So, sir, these were our questions for today's session. And uh, we will be seeing you next week with another session on Bhagavad Gita. So, thank Hare you so much, sir. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much.